Hey, all right, good morning, YouTube. Uh, today is October, I want to say the third, maybe it is the fourth, <laughs> uh, somewhere in there. Um, wanted to do just a really fast video on this uh, YXE 1000R intercooler um, we custom built for our customer in California. Um, <clears throat> this thing has got a lot of interest online, so I figured I would uh, just talk about it real quick and explain the reasoning behind uh, some of the stuff we've done. If you go to our uh, Facebook page or our Instagram, you can see what this looks like installed on a mock-up, but we'll talk about the functionality of this particular core. Um, this is gonna go on a big turbo car, uh, 58 millimeter turbo on ethanol, which requires a lot of fuel. To, you know to keep up with that volume of air um, so we did a secondary injector setup on this um, we'll talk about that in a minute but first uh, we've done these intercoolers uh, I've probably done about 20 of them in the last couple of years here um, not production yet but this will be available on our website probably relatively soon um, depending on you know if you if you need this uh, you can always reach out to me and we can figure out if you know we can do a one-off piece for you or or you can wait until you can see them you know up as a general use uh, part in the near future here but anyway uh, this is 750 horsepower rated garrett water to air core uh roughly 11 inches by four by four um just under but actual Garrett core, not China. Um, so you can see, you can't see the whole full part number because it got welded over. But anyway, I like this core for a lot of reasons, obviously packageability, um, you know, it fits right in, in that space that's available. Intercooler mounts to the side of the engine, kind of in between the throttle bodies and the oil tank. Uh, so it's not over the top of the engine where you got, you know, exhaust and heat, um, heat soak in this thing. Um, and it still allows, you know, access to anything you need to get to on the throttle bodies or spark plugs. Uh, also, gives you room underneath for, you know, thermostat housing and, and whatever um, you might need to get to on that side. So pretty simple. Um, you know, you're, so this is water core, so this has to have coolant going through it. And, uh, you know, we use a three quarter inch barb fitting. Um, I do these instead of ANs, because if you go to a dash 12 AN from a uh, three quarter hose, um, it still steps it down a little bit. So you're gonna go down to maybe just under like 700, maybe 690. Um, 690 thousandths of ID through that fitting. So when you just do the tube, three quarter tube, you know, there's no restriction whatsoever. Uh, that comes from doing a lot of uh, cores like this on uh, Porsches and um, we did a whole bunch of Acura NSX twin turbo stuff back in the day. And we were using similar core to this. So, you know, use these cores and cars absolutely to their capacity and they work amazing. Yamaha, I've personally made over 500 horsepower to the tire with this core. So it's kind of infinite, you know, the more water you can get through this thing, um, the more heat you can take out of it. Uh, we do sell the Johnson style uh, brushless uh, water pump, you know, which is my go-to. It's been my go-to for street vehicles for a long time, but it works good on this Yamaha. Um, very low current draw very high water capacity. You know, it's a, it's a really good match for one of these uh, water to air systems. And then in the front of the car, you're gonna have a heat exchanger, whether it be a 16 to 18 style OEM radiator, or we're gonna offer a bolt-in uh, large size heat exchanger for the 19 and newer platform. Um, but that's still in the works, so. That's how that works. You know, you're gonna basically, you're taking all this heat from your charge air, pumping it up to the front of the car where you got nothing going on. Um, and, you know, making that exchange uh, through that front radiator. So works super good. Um, you know, you don't have to have fans and stuff blowing on the core to keep it cool um, when it's real close to, again, to like the top of the engine. Um, 
or in a confined hot space like that. So that's why I do them this way. Um, I'm not saying any other stuff is, is bad or doesn't work. I mean, it does work. So you know, this is just kind of our take on it. Um, this one is custom. This has the 50 millimeter blow off valve port on the back side of the tank. Now, this doesn't fit with the factory oil lines. Uh, without this blow off valve here, you know, your oil pipes kind of run down and they just go right past this through this area. So in this case, this guy has a aftermarket tank and he's got dash 10 line to a oil cooler. So, you know, this, this doesn't make any difference. This is how I do it on our shop car. Um, Let's see if I can turn this with one hand. So what makes this one different is it has the three additional injector ports. Now this comes from a lot of testing. Um, we ran uh, 2600 cc injectors on our shop car, single injector in the factory throttle bodies. Uh, we've been running it like that for about two years. Um, it works good, it makes good power. Uh, low speed drivability, even with MoTeC and extremely good tuning, you know, is not awesome. Your, your AFRs are pretty fat and um, it, you know, there, it leaves some to be desired compared to a smaller injector. So, you know, 1700 is about as big as you want to go on a single injector, in my opinion, for drivability. And maybe you want to do flex fuel, so your ethanol and pump gas, you can do that with a 1700. You can't do that with 2600, it's just too big. Um, this particular individual has 1700s in the car now, and he still has a set of 1050s from the previous setup. So he's going to use his 1050s in the throttles and then put the 1700s as the secondaries. Um, we're using this Injector Dynamics fuel rail. Talked about this thing before. This is really literally the only one I recommend buying after using uh, quite a few of them. Uh, mainly because you know like the spacers and everything are built in there's no tab or extra spacer or bolt you know we get all this extra hardware on this thing it gives it more probability of uh, failing this one doesn't have anything extra it's all one piece so that makes it really nice you know and that's going to attach uh, goes like this right to those two bosses um, you know and then the injector obviously lives in there so th this injector aims at the back side of the throttle blade. Um, it's a little bit different of an angle than the factory injector angle, but that's to get that injector to spray right in the middle of that port, because obviously it changes diameter. It's bigger back here than it is towards the cylinder head, so that angle changes a little bit. Um, that's why we did it on this car. We're doing this same setup on our shop car. Uh, so that we can, you know, in my case, I'm going to run a 1050 primary and I have 2600s that are in it. We're going to make those secondaries. That has to be done through an aftermarket EMS. Um, my car is a MoTeC. This gentleman's car is also a MoTeC. So it makes it super easy to just add the secondary injector wiring, which is literally four wires. It's a power wire and then your three signal wires, one to each injector. Um, and then there's, you know, obviously some setup in the computer to make that happen. And you set a threshold and you say once my primary injector gets to um, whatever you set, say 85% or something or 70%, then you're going to start coming in with a second set of injectors to supplement that um, required amount of fuel. So, you know, with a 1050 and a 1700, which is what this guy's going to use, um, you're still at a, what is that, 2750 cc's, which is bigger than a single 2600. So, you know, 550 to the tire, no problem. Um, he's also using our uh, DW400 fuel pump, so he should be good to go. Um, anyway, that's this thing in a nutshell. Oh, the, to, the way this attaches to the car, um, the ports are O-rings that fit, and these are velocity stacks. Uh, we, we manufacture these flanges. We sell them separately for anybody wanting to build one. O-ring onto the throttle body, um, and you know, kind of bottoms out and holds the throttle body in place. And then we have some brackets that mount to the top of this and then attach to the frame. So it's supported by the frame. Throttle body is fully captured. Um, no extra brackets or hold downs or anything needed to keep the throttles from um, popping loose from the cylinder head. So that's kind of a bonus. There's still enough uh, compliance here in this 
big fat o-ring we use and then the rubber on the other side of the throttle body that you know vibrations and that kind of stuff is not a concern um we've had this style of intercooler on the car for uh, since late 2018 so i mean you know we've, we've put some time into this that's why we finally uh pulled the trigger on doing one piece uh, outlet flange and that kind of stuff so anyway just figured i'd show that off um thanks guys see you soon bye